for you too. So uh, this is something else that again was cheap. I paid $22, I think, but they are parallels. So these are eighth inch thick and they come in a variety of heights. So those two are one and five eighths and these ones are, are half inch. Uh, what do you do with those? Well, let me tell you. All right, so you see the gouge down inside there? That's in your way. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's an accessory <laughs> that is super useful. A cheap ass paintbrush that you paid $3 for at uh, the dollar store or wherever you got it. But um, yeah, uh, you can use it while you're machining something. You can use it while everything's off. But just, you know, it's, it's basically a little brush that gets in shit and cleans the crap out. Because you're going to make metal bits. You know, I, I make metal splinters by the billions. So anyway, um, now my surfaces are clean and uh, not covered with, with uh, metal bits. Of course, now I've got them on my... my uh, Two parallels so I'm gonna stick those inside there like that and now what I have is two points of contact across a fairly flat surface it's I'm sure if I uh, uh, mic to this thing out I would see that there was probably some not quite flat as much as I would like but it's flat enough for my purposes and now I have two surfaces on top you know that are pretty parallel pretty darn parallel with two then vertical supports that I can then clamp something in with so I can make that thing very flat. Uh, what do I have that would work here? Well, this is a really bad example. So here's a heat sink. <laughs> yeah, that's a really bad example. But anyway, let me close it up a little bit. A little bit more, here we go. So anyway, if you look in there, you can see that the heat sink, imagine if this was a solid block of aluminum rather than a crappy little heat sink. Uh, you can see that it's sitting on the top of this uh, parallel bar and the top of that parallel bar. And so that means that uh, across this entire clamping area, it's now completely parallel with everything else. So, you know, the table is exactly 90 degrees, both this way and this way with the mill and the whole entire assembly here. Uh, my cross vise and everything else is exactly 90 degrees as well. And now, um, because I've got these little parallel bars in here and this is sitting on top of them, now that too is also 90 degrees to all this. So I've maintained a high level of consistency uh, with staying in an exact 90 degree orientation with my cutter. So then all I do is I tighten up the jaws and you know on, on this and as you can see I'm just barely in here and of course this little flimsy heat sink's not going to clamp in here very well but it doesn't matter uh, for the demonstration anyway. But now I know that this is clamped in and it's pressed down against those parallel bars and so it's going to be exactly 90 degrees like everything else is. So it keeps my orientation very consistent. These things were huge. Uh, what did I do with them? Here they go. So these blocks of wood, these were my early parallel bars. And I cut these on my table saw. <laughs> so as you can imagine, they're really parallel. Not, <laughs> even though these were $24 parallel bars, Chineseium craptasticness, uh, they are still a billion times better than these are because A, they're much more resilient. As you can see, you can drill holes in this. I have to make this thick just to make it hold up, right? Uh, so it takes up a lot of space, whereas these are only an eighth inch thick. They're made out of steel. They're actually machined by somebody, you know, maybe not to super good specs. I'm sure that if I were to mic this thing out, uh, I would see variations in them. But again, this is milling on a drill press. We're not a machine shop. I don't need that level of accuracy. These are good enough and they're cheap. So by all means, buy parallel bars. They will make your life so much easier. Uh, if I'm doing something quick, you know, that slot in my cross vise, I will open that up a little bit more. 
Yeah, don't do this to your parallel bars. I will because you'll roll over the corners. But I'll put them in that slot in there and then just kind of eyeball level, right? <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but my eyeballs kind of suck at times and they don't always do level. So instead, if I want something to actually be truly 90 degrees from the cutter, which is probably what I want to do 100% of the time, or pretty darn close to it, I use the parallel bars. Place it across both those things, clamp it down, and then it's going to be good to go within a few thou every single time. It's important, however, that whatever you place it on, so I've got this pretty clean, I just brushed it off, that you don't have metal bits, spooge, you know, last night's dinner, kernels of rice, you know, dead rat, whatever, on your surfaces here, because that's going to screw up the works too. So you want to have these things cleaned off. Paintbrush is a great thing for that. But parallel bars, geez, this is, again, cheap, definitely worth having, definitely worth having. <laughs>